Mount Olive family and CEA community. As we transition through this new frontier of education, the CEA would like to assure you that we are as committed as ever before. Please stay engaged with us as we provide virtual literacy, mentorship, and cultural activities for our youth. Be sure to follow, like, and share our CEA Literacy Series and our Kids Corner online Sunday School courses on our Instagram and Facebook pages. Look out for the release of our spring newsletter and an awesome announcement about our Summer Reading is Lit Challenge. Your child could be eligible for one of our grand prizes, a back-to-school scholarship for uniforms or school supplies. Stay tuned.
How good the Lord is. Blessings to each of you indeed. We're blessed and we're privileged to be in the house of the Lord once again. We're here by his grace and his mercy. It's such a blessing to be able to see you again this Sunday morning as we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. If you would grace me for a moment and go with me to God in prayer. Gracious and eternal God, our Father, we stop now to say thank you. Thank you, God, for another day. Thank you for the bounty of blessings that you have so graciously given to each of us. We thank you, God, for forgiving us of all of our sins. We thank you, God, for loving us unconditionally. We pray now, God, that as we worship you in spirit and in truth, we will thank you all the more for being the great God that you are. It is in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, that we offer this prayer. And every child of God said, Amen. Once again, we're blessed to worship the Lord as we have been sharing in Scripture, in Bible study. And I want to, even in the preaching moment, continue to share uh, from Acts chapter 8. So I want you to go with me to Acts chapter 8, verse number 4. Acts chapter 8, verse number Four. When you have it, please respond by saying amen right there with your friends and your family. Hear the word of God as it speaks to us. Therefore, those who had been scattered went about preaching the word. Therefore, those who had been scattered went about preaching the word. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be unto our God. I want to tag this text for this sermonic moment. Keep on sharing as a witness. Keep on sharing as a witness. Again, as we have been working through Acts chapter 8, both, both sermonically and uh, in Bible study, I think that this word again speaks to us as a church specifically in the sense that we have made witnessing particularly a thematic priority for us in the year of 2020. And since that is the case, I want to encourage you to keep on sharing as a witness. Why, why encourage us to keep sharing as a witness? I believe that this text shows us that life can take us through some difficult, perhaps even some dismal moments. So much so that if you are a child of God and you are honest, there are moments when perhaps the pressures, the pains, the problems of life can seemingly paralyze your passion for proclaiming the truth of Christ. If, if we would be honest, I know many of us, we would not like to admit it, but suffering can sometimes prompt us to want to be silent. And right in this text, as we have been engaging Acts chapter 8, what we see unequivocally is that suffering and persecution has been prevalent among the people of the way or the believers in Christ. When we see in the text, it says that there was this great persecution. It comes right on the heels of the stoning of Stephen. The stoning of Stephen takes place at the end of chapter 7. Chapter 8, we see a great persecution of the church, so much so that people are being pulled or dragged from their homes. Yet the Bible says these scattered believers, these believers who had been in Jerusalem, they had witnessed the persecution of the church. They resolved in their mind that rather than be silent, we will continue to share. And that's all I'm saying to us as we study this word today, I know that trouble may be around you. I know that hardships may be in front of you. I know that difficulties may be in your face. I know that one dilemma 
after another, one uh, adverse moment after another, maybe in front of you. But the reality of the text that we see is that despite what we are facing, despite what we have gone through or what we are going through, we still have the biblical responsibility to keep sharing as witnesses of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you notice something about the text, and we go back to Acts chapter 1, verse number 8, he says, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and the remotest parts of the earth. He says, you will be my witnesses, but he never tells them that you'll have to be my witnesses even through persecution. You'll have to be my witnesses even through pain. And, and you know, God has a strange way of, of doing things like that. You remember Jesus with his disciples on Lake Genesaret, the Sea of Galilee at Acts in, in Mark chapter number four. It was in Mark chapter four when he says, let us pass over to the other side. He tells them that we together are going to get to the other side, but he does not tell them that from one shore to the other shore they will encounter a storm and I believe that the Lord wants us to understand that when he gives us divine directions we don't have to worry about the dilemmas or the difficulties that will come in between the direction and the destination because if God gives us directions we can trust that he will deliver us to our final destination and I want to suggest to you right now that even the Lord says in Acts chapter 1 verse number 8 you shall be my witnesses to suggest you may have some hardships you may have some pains you may have some struggles but the same way that he told Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1 I'll be with you he simply says that I'm going to be with you even though you don't know what you may face in the days to come if you will just trust me I will take care of you and that is what we see in the text and I want us to know that if we're going to keep on sharing you cannot be scared of the saws that you will encounter you can't be sidetracked by your assignments that you will encounter you can't be silent when you see your Samaritans and you can't be shamed about your Savior that's what I want to look at first of all if we're going to keep on sharing don't be scared of your Saul look at the text verse number one of the scripture says Saul was in hearty agreement with putting him to death and on that day, a great persecution began against the church in Jerusalem, and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Verse 3, but Saul began ravaging the church, entering house after house, and dragging off men and women, and he would put them in prison. Two things I want us to be mindful of when we encounter our Saul. Our Saul perhaps will be a religious persecutor and a relentless persecutor. Notice what we see about this religious persecutor. He had a misguided mindset. <clears throat> you have to have a misguided mindset if you are in hearty agreement with seeing someone go through pain. But you do know, beloved, there are some people who are so misguided in their mindset that they do not mind being a part of what you have to go through as it relates to your pain. He had this misguided mindset. There are some people who are sitting in sanctuaries who still have this same misguided mindset though they come to church though they sit on the pew though they can quote scriptures know they know how to use the religious rhetoric that seems as if they are connected with the Christ but they are nothing more than religious persecutors how will you continue to witness when you encounter your religious persecutor the person that has made it their business they have made it their passion they have made it their plan they have made it everything about their whole life to be a part of hurting and trying to bring harm to you as a believer will you continue to share Christ when you face folk who are serious about trying to bring suffering to your life the text teaches us that this man Saul was an educated person this man Saul was a person who was astute in 
in the law, this man saw, believed that he was doing God a justice by bringing pain and persecution to the church. You must understand it, that, that he had this misguided mindset, but he also had a misguided motivation. How is it that a person can be so motivated and find so much delight and enjoyment in being a part of someone else's pain? Do not let it fool you, beloved. There are people that you are sitting in sanctuaries with that you know, even as friends, even people that you know in church context, they are nothing more than religious persecutors. They have this misguided motivation. They are motivated by seeing you suffer. They are motivated by seeing your pain. They believe that if they can cause you enough hurt and harm, it will cause you to hush. But let me, let me remind you, don't let the hurt, don't let the harm cause you to hush, but it ought to give you a high hallelujah that you'll say, despite what you say or do to me, I'm going to keep on witnessing. I wish I had two or three people that I could just encourage right now that despite the pain that you are going through, do not let it paralyze you, but cause it to put you in a position where you will exclaim all the more about a savior named Jesus. The Bible shows us that he was a religious persecutor. It was his passion. It was a deep passion. Not only was it his passion, but he has this destructive plan. He was going from house to house. He was going from door to door, dragging people out. Do you know what kind of misguided mindset and motivation it takes for you to plot and plan to do that kind of malicious and have that kind of mean spirit? If you are that malicious and that mean, do you know how misguided your mindset has to be simply because you do not like what someone perhaps they may be doing they are believing different from you that was the mindset of this man Saul but he also he had to get permission and his his permission was demonic because he didn't just do this on his own he would get permission from the high priest they were in concert with his critic critical behavior they were in concert with his cantankerous behavior and let me just say this parenthetically beloved when you see religious persecutors don't believe that they are there by themselves they are usually the spokesperson but they usually have a contingency of cantankerous people in a crowd that's behind the scenes that are pushing them to do the stuff that they are doing just make sure that you are not the person that's the spoke person nor are you the person that's a part of the crowd this man Saul had people who were pushing him and prompting him he would get permission to make sure that he was doing this under the auspices of the religious rulers of the day they wanted to be a part of bringing hurt and harm to these people because they had committed themselves to Christ they were committed to the word and the work of Christ and he believed if I bring them enough hurt and harm it will hush their testimony I want to encourage you right now you've got to know you have to keep on sharing even when people try to hurt you even when people try to harm you even when people try to talk bad about you try to make you feel that you should not do what you're doing keep on witnessing but he was a relentless persecutor the text would suggest according to verse 3 we see without question he was determined to cause pain and he was diligent in causing pain. You have to be determined to find the addresses of people and try to quiz them and give them enough queries to find out if they are truly connected to Christ. Do you know what kind of determination you have to have in order to be able to do that kind of evil to people that, that you Go from house to house. That means you are checking person after person. You are interrogating person. Do you know what kind of determination and diligence that requires that you want to find people who are committed. You are so in 
indignant of their connection to Christ, their following of Christ, that you will stop at nothing to bring hurt and harm to them. That was Saul. But let me tell you, beloved, that was Saul in biblical times. But there are some Sauls that we see every single day. They are relentless about their persecution. They are so determined that they will find people and look for people and try to interrogate people to find what they can find to try to hurt them and hurt their witness. Don't believe it's just Saul in the Bible. There are some contemporary Saul's in your context today. They are determined to bring pain to your life. They are determined to cause pain. They are diligent to cause pain. They'll be all over your social media. They'll be digging all behind the scenes. They'll be asking all kinds of questions trying to see how they can bring hurt and harm you. How do you handle that when you meet people like that? I would say to you, you have to have a resolve in your mind that come hell or high water. Whatever you do, whatever you say, however diligent you may be, however determined you may be to, to, to detour me from being devoted to God, you have to tell somebody, nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Say, talk about me, but I'll still tell others about Jesus. Mistreat me, but I'll still still tell others about Jesus scandalize my name but I'll still tell others about Jesus these people face this song but you cannot be scared when you face your song but let me say it like this you can't be sidetracked by your Simon text says in verse 9 look in the script says now there was a man named Simon who formerly was practicing Magic in the city and astonishing the people of Samaria, claiming to be someone great. Then you look at the B portion of verse 10. It says, this man is what is called the great power of God. What we see about Simon and the reason you can't be sidetracked by your Simon is, is that he has this perceived pursuit he has this perceived prominence he has this perceived power when you look at the text it says there was this man named Simon who was practicing magic his his pursuit was not really ever to help people but it was always to keep people in bondage what will you do when you find a person their whole pursuit in life is to keep you bound so that they could have you under their power and authority. Be careful, beloved, of who you give your allegiance to. Be careful of who you align yourself with. In order to keep witnessing, you've got to know you're going to meet some Simons who will try to sidetrack your life. Can you imagine had... These scattered believers, had they aligned themselves with Simon as these Samaritans had. They would have found themselves believing in this magic. They would have found themselves giving deference to magic more than to the master. And I would submit to you that there are some Simons in your life. They want to cause you to depend on them more than depend on God. They want to use the tricks in their bag to try to touch your life in such a way that you believe you can't live without them. But notice his perceived power. When you look at the text in verse number nine, it says that he was someone claiming to be great. That means that he had allowed what was going on in his context. He believed his own press. There are some people who have such perceived power that they want you to believe that they have this perceived prominence so much that they are more important than what they are. That, that's why if you're going to witness, be careful of those people who have these perceived pursuits and this perceived prominence just because you are somebody 
in the community does not make you somebody in Christ. Just because you have the hype in the community does not mean you deserve the same hype in church. You have to understand it is God who makes us, not our titles, not, not the degrees, that the letters that are behind our name. It is God who makes us with or without the academic training. You have to know with God I am somebody. Nobody loves academic training anymore than I do but beloved don't let perceived prominence make you feel that you are less than somebody because they may have something that you don't have and those who may have don't let those who do not have make you feel bad about where God has pushed you and where God has positioned you what you have to understand is that there are people like Simon in our midst they will make us believe that they are greater than God and if you're not careful you will start working Worshiping them more than you worship God. Come here, somebody. C come here. Let me let me whisper in your ear. Yes, follow your pastor leader. Yes, love your pastor leader. Yes, support your pastor leader. But your pastor leader is not God. Never give anybody more deference than you do God. I know you love your bae. I know you love your boo. I know you love your girl. That's your dude, baby. I know that's your man. That's your everything. But you have to understand, God. God will be there when they are gone. You have to understand, do not let perceived prominence take precedence over a providential God. And when you face these kind of people, if you are not careful, you will get sidetracked and you will start giving them more attention than you give to God. What has your attention? I raise that relevant interrogative. I raise it in the form of a rhetorical question. What has your attention right Right now, is it God or is it goods? Is it the master or is it man? What has your attention? It ought to be God. And when God has your attention more than anything else, you will witness despite what you're facing. You will keep on witnessing despite what's happening. You will keep on sharing every chance you get. You will tell somebody about Jesus. Everywhere you go, you will tell somebody about Jesus. But then I want to remind you, don't be silent to your Samaritans. Verse 10, the A portion of the text simply states this, and they all, from smallest to greatest, were giving their attention to him. Verse 11 says this, and they were giving him attention because he had for a long time astonished them with his magic arts. Beloved, don't be silent to your Samaritans because they need a word. They have been long misguided and they have been long misinformed. Because when you look at this text in verse number 10, it says, and they all, from the smallest to the greatest, were giving attention to him. That means that they had put their minds on the wrong person, on the wrong pursuits. And I want to encourage you, beloved, that there are some people that you will encounter when you are about this journey of witnessing. They have been misguided by the wrong people. You have to make sure that you are sharing with them a message of Christ. Can't be upset. Can't hold this charge necessarily against them. They were only following what they knew. The text says, from the smallest to the greatest, youngest to the oldest, prominent to the not so prominent, big, small, it doesn't matter. They were all giving their attention to him. You know, when you think about this, and he called himself great, and they thought that he was somebody great because he had this perceived power. Because when you look at verse number 10, the B portion, this man is what is called the great power of God. They thought he was some divine power. They thought he was someone greater than what he really was. So therefore, 
they were being misinformed because when you look at verse number 11, it says, and they were giving him attention because he had for a long time astonished them with his magic art. Who are you? Who are you giving your attention to? Who, who, have, who, who has misinformed you to the point that for such a long time you cannot seem to break away from them or from it? What is it that is so intriguing and attractive about what they are saying and what they are doing? That's why when you meet people like this, I don't care how it seems that they just will not get it. That's why you have the responsibility to keep on telling them about Jesus. You don't know how much they've been told. You don't know how long they They've been fooled. You don't know how long they have been misinformed and misguided, but I believe that you have been sent to them for such a time as this. God did not put them in your path arbitrarily, but God has placed people in your path for a purpose. And if God has put people in your path for a purpose, you've got to learn how to prayerfully walk in that purpose that God has put them and you there for. He didn't make you cross paths accidentally he gave you a reason for crossing paths with them so I say you can't get silent when you see people have been sidetracked by Simon you can't get silent when you see people who have dealt with their soul you have to make sure that you tell them about Jesus that's why I'll close by saying you don't be shame of your Savior listen at the text verse 4 of the scripture says therefore those who had been scattered went about preaching the word. It says Philip went down to the city of Samaria and began proclaiming Christ to them. That therefore strikes me because the reason we can't be ashamed of our Savior because he saved you. Notice the text says those. And I don't know about you, but I want to be in the those crowds, the those crowds, it's the, the ones who have had an encounter with Jesus. And I'll say, I'm, try, I'm trying to hold my peace, but I'll say that I've had an encounter with Jesus. And since I've had that encounter with Jesus, I can say that the therefore means whatever I've been through, it did not change who I'm going to tell others about. They could have easily said that we've been through too much. They could have easily said we've had too many hardships and too many pains that we are just going to throw in the towel and we're going to give up. But because they had been saved, they had to keep on telling it. But not only had they been saved, the Bible says those who had been scattered simply means they had been sent. And that means the people who were once in Jerusalem and they had seen the suffering, they had to keep on sharing the good news of Jesus because he allowed them to go through suffering and not to give them a spirit of silence but to give them a spirit of shouting and a spirit of sharing. What I'm simply saying to us is God may take us through some difficult situations but we have a testimony that we need to tell and I have to say when I go back to Acts chapter 1 verse number 8 they not only have been saved and not only have they been sent but they've been sealed because the Bible says after the Holy Spirit has come upon you that simply says they've been saved and they've been sealed until the day of redemption and I have good news for somebody that's listening and watching right now you've got to tell your story of how the Lord 
save your life. You got to tell your story of how the Lord kept you when you were going through your most difficult moments. You have a story to tell of how the Lord has washed you in the blood of the crucified one. So you have to keep on sharing. As I get ready to close, I want to encourage somebody right now in the midst of the pandemic keep on sharing in the midst of job loss keep on sharing in the midst of disappointment keep on sharing in the midst of income loss keep on sharing in the midst of heartache keep on sharing in the midst of your difficult days keep on sharing how can I keep on sharing brother preacher when I'm going through the storm how can I keep on sharing when tears are in my eyes how can I keep on sharing because my days are long and my nights are difficult how can I keep on sharing when I don't know where my next meal is going to come from how can I keep on sharing when I don't know how I'm going to provide for my children well I have good news for you the same God that kept you before the pandemic he the same God that's going to keep you after the pandemic the same God that has kept you before the pandemic he the same God that's going to keep you while you're going through we serve a God that will never leave you we serve a God that will never let you down I stop to tell somebody on my way to my seat oh what a joy it is to know we serve a God that's not going to change even in the midst of changing times we have the victory and that victory is in Jesus so hold on yes sir hold on because help is on the way hold hold on help is on the way I know it's hard right now but we serve a God that's on our side that's why I show up here even in an empty building but I have a full heart even in an empty sanctuary but I have a full savior that walks with me that talks with me that guides my mind so I'm going to keep on sharing until I see you again I'm going to keep on sharing until we get through this because he's been too good and he's been too great to me for me to quit right now he saved me and he sealed me and until he comes again I'll tell my story what a friend we have in Jesus all of our sin and grief seal bear oh what a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer I've got a story to tell and that story is about a man named Jesus he went to Calvary's hill he died he died for me he was placed in the tomb but early shucks early Sunday morning my rock of ages Sunday morning my rock got out of a rock my rock in a weary land my rock that keeps me from stumbling my rock that holds me in the midst of life's struggles got out of a rock and said all oh, power is in my hand so today I close by saying keep on telling them your story about Jesus tell them about a man that gives sight to blinded eyes tell them about a man that can turn your troubled and your midnight in today tell them about a man that healed the sick raised the dead tell them about a man that is walking with you 
tell them about a man that's keeping you. What is his name? Not Donald Trump. What is his name? Not Donald Trump. What is his name? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christos. My way out of no way. My bridge over troubled water. The one who walks with me. The one who talks with me. The one who guides my mind. His name is Jesus. Jesus in the morning. Jesus in the noonday. Jesus in the midnight hour. Jesus in the storm. Jesus in the rain. Jesus in the pandemic. Jesus in a courtroom. Jesus in a jail cell. Jesus in a hospital. Jesus in your home. Jesus on your job. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Help me call him right where you are. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Just say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When you wake up in the morning, call him Jesus. When you go through your day, call him Jesus. When you get ready to go to bed at night, call him Jesus. You'll be surprised of how the name of Jesus will give you peace that surpasses all understanding. Jesus will give you peace to rest at night. Jesus will give you peace to not worry about your bills. Jesus will give you peace to not worry about your children. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. See us. See us. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your power. Thank you, God, for your power. Thank you for your peace. Thank you, God, for keeping us. Thank you, God, for loving us. Thank you for giving us the strength to never lose our testimony. Even through trying times, even through tumultuous times. God, I pray that you would bless the heart of every listener for your glory. God, we thank you for loving us. God, we thank you for caring for us. We thank you, God, for keeping us. There is no greater love, there is no greater God than you. God, I don't know who may, in, may be in a situation where they are literally at the breaking point of feeling that they don't have another word, another testimony, another witness. But God, I pray that even in this moment, you would comfort their heart to know that they must keep sharing. Even when they feel that they, they can't, God, give them the power to keep sharing. God, I pray for that man, that woman, that boy, or that girl that does not know you as Lord and Savior. God, I pray for that, that individual that feels as if giving up is their only option, but today they feel that you are God of another chance. God, I pray for the person that's looking for a place to connect and to grow, to be a part of a ministry that will teach the truth of Scripture and learn how to apply that truth to their life each and every day. God, we know no other name to call on but you. And we call on the name of Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Every heart said, amen. I pray that God has blessed you and that God will bless you and that God will keep you in the days to come. If you are sitting right now and you are listening and you feel the tugging of God, God on your heart, please know that God loves you. Perhaps you've been going through this week and this has been a week of difficulty. Please know God loves you. God has not forgotten about you. 
God's hand is still upon your life. God's hand is still upon your family's life. And God will provide. Even where you can't provide, God will do for you that which you cannot do for yourself. So keep trusting him. Hard, but keep trusting him. Difficult, keep trusting him. I'm talking to you right there. Keep trusting him with everything in your being, knowing that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. I 